Hey church family, it's an honor to once again partake of communion with you. Uh, communion is a really special time for us as a church and um, we obviously were able to take it together on a Saturday night in our sanctuary and Marcy and I are honored to, uh, to lead you through this time of communion together as we take it uh, through this online, uh, this virtual worship gathering. So as we, just as we contemplate communion, we have to remember that not only was Jesus is Jesus the Lion of Judah, as we talked about uh, here in Joel chapter 3, but he is also the Lamb who was slain for all of us. And that's what we remember during this time of communion, that he was the one who came to this earth, who represented God, who it was God with skin on, and who ultimately came to die for us so that we could be with God forever. And he is the reason that we can ascend to the mountain of God and be with God forever. Jesus Christ has made a way, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm just going to read to you Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 11, and then we'll partake together. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, writes Paul. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's just pause here, and I'm going to ask you as house church uh, leaders or uh, head of your household, if you're all on your own, just go ahead and grab the bread as well. But I'm just going to ask you to pass the bread around uh, to your house church or to your household, and uh, make sure that everyone who is a believer, who is whose heart is right with the Lord, has a piece of bread in their hand, and we'll partake together here in a few moments, in a few seconds. Mercy, it's the body of Christ broken for you. Church, this is the body of Christ representing the body of Christ that was broken for all of us. Because Jesus Christ was broken, we can get put back together and made whole. Let's, uh, let's partake together. Paul continues, in the same way after supper, he took the cup, meaning Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So hopefully all of you have uh, a glass or glasses of juice or wine in your household or in your house church that are ready for you. This cup represents the spilled blood of Jesus that he spilled for all of us. Excuse me, so that our <clears throat> so that our sins could be forgiven. He talks about in God's word how his blood, as it covered the doorposts in uh, Exodus, talking about the angel of death, how his blood covers over our hearts and covers over our sin and makes it so that God can no longer see it. It's forgiven and we're set free from it. Uh, Far as the east is from the west, that sin is taken away. That's that's what this cup represents, the new covenant in Christ's blood. Marcy, I'm just going to get you to pass these cup around. Marcy, this is the blood of Jesus, representing the blood of Jesus spilled for you. Let's partake together, church. Once again, church, it's been an honor to uh, to partake of communion with you, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, and I encourage you just to continue to open up your heart to everything that God has for you these days. Mm -hmm. Remember that this is just a, a sample of that feast that we will once again partake of, or that we will partake of once uh, sometime in the future on the mountain of God. Thank you. Mm -hmm.